Like, like you are one of the dudes who done broke all the hottest street niggas out here that we done grew up to. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you feel about New York now? You know what I'm saying? Because you grew up when it was good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm going to say this shit and I want people to catch it, right? And, you know, whoever takes it the wrong way, fuck it. Um, sometimes... Turn my music high, 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 high. Yeah. Okay, how do you stay connected to the streets so well? You be in Hollywood, you deal with all types of billionaires, millionaires. How do you like decide to be like, you know what, I'm coming back to chill, you know what I'm saying, without having no, you know what I mean, feeling no type of way, because you know everybody going to want a piece of, you know, what you're doing and things like that. From the street, from the project, man. From the East River Project, you know, born and raised. I done lived in the Bronx. You know, my mom is from the Bronx, and my whole life, that's where I live. You know, I mean, that's all I know. You know, I could rest my head in a nice environment, but after that, I can't rub shoulders with them. I can't fuck one of them white niggas' daughters and sit down at their dinner table without it being a noose out back ready to hang my motherfucking ass from their racist grandfather or some shit. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. When I wake up, I come across the bridge back to my hood. You understand what I'm saying? Or I could be out of town in L.A. with my niggas in the hood or wherever I'm at. Like, I'm not a Hollywood type of individual. That's, I don't know that life. I can't relate to them. You understand what I'm saying? How you feel about the dudes that do come from the street, though, and then they like, nah, fuck that. I ain't going back to the hood. You see what happened to niggas, da-da-da. I got to respect their opinion on how they carry it with their life. Mm -hmm. Some people might have been raised a different way. Some people might have had it so rough. Some niggas might have been getting robbed. You understand what I'm saying? Like, a lot of situations could have happened to make a person feel that way. So I can't knock the... But I'm just a strong believer that if you forget where you came from, you're never going to get to where you want to go. You understand? So I always stay grounded. You understand what I'm saying? Certain niggas in my hood, I'm always going to check in on certain chicks that was giving me pussy when I was younger. We might be out of shape and fucked up now, but I'll still buy their son sneakers. First day of school, that's, Christmas, that's niggas, dope. they need something. No, real talk. That's crazy. You know, some people, uh, some of their niggas could be locked up. Some chick niggas be locked up. I know the son might need something. I'm still blowing through. Some of my niggas that's locked down um, could say, yo, you drop this to my baby mother. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just genuine nigga shit. Just like I ain't going nowhere. And that's why I get the love, you know, that I get, you know? I don't switch up, man. And, and Slay, like, you are one of the dudes who done broke all the hottest street niggas out here that we done grew up to. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you feel about New York now? You know what I'm saying? Because you grew up when it was good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm going to say this shit and I want people to catch it, right? And, and you know, and whoever takes it the wrong way, fuck it. Um, sometimes people have to dick ride. You understand what I'm saying? To stay relevant. Somebody who is who they is, they're going to stay in their lane and they're going to continue to do what they got to do. Like, New York, for instance, we dictated everything. We dictated fashion, we dictated hip-hop, we dictated everything. New York was the mecca, you mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? As far as hip-hop is concerned. Yeah. Anything that was going on with that, we want to do baggy jeans or, or baggy shirts or we want to wear leather sweatshirts with our name or whatever it was. That shit came here, the world followed. Somehow, some way, shit, it turned. I, I believe it's when uh, the South kind of kicked in the door and started getting their props and they started popping. A lot of New York niggas forgot all they got to do was hold ground. Mm. And they got their sound, we got our sound. Yeah. These niggas start doing what they was doing. Hopping out the bando. Yeah, it forgot, you know, like, Trapping. I don't even know what that word means. <laughs> Disrespect to that. Yeah. Where I come from, a trap is something that you're in that you can't get out of. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? That's real. But like I said, even when it comes to um, different gang cultures, we start, like, emulating other states with that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, what What was wrong with, with, with uh, the black space? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Javelins, Tomahawks, Deceps, you know? and all these Decepticons, dudes. Decepticons, just low lives. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? Emulate that. But then again, like I said, everybody does things the way they want to do it. There's nothing wrong with it. I just want people to know that New York is New York. And you should always want to rep where you from. You come from first. 
and it's just like, so when niggas start dick riding the South, it just took our whole identity. So now it's like, if all their music is popping and we hear that all day on the radio, niggas is mad at the DJs. But guess what? You can't be mad at the DJs. You know why? Not only did the artists go South, the fans went South. So they don't even want to hear a nigga from New York that's talking something irrelevant. Yeah. All they want to do is party, dance, whatever. Now, I'm going to take it off the DJs another step. Mm. The record companies sign all these artists. So if whatever record the record company is pushing to the radio is the fucking record that's going to play. So, 24-7. In a you sense, know? do you think in a sense, because uh, you've been in the game for a minute, Slay, so... Do you think there is a conspiracy in a sense of them trying to just push certain types of music as opposed to, or is it just, that's just what it is? It's not a conspiracy. It's no different than back then. Okay. When the Stout Brothers was like, show us some love. Show us some love. Knocking on the door. Show us some love. Show us some love. They wasn't getting no love. West Cats Coast was getting no love. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody gets their time to shine. Okay. But the only thing that was different back then was even when Dre and them came through, uh, and, and they was doing their thing, we still was who we was. Yeah. It wasn't until the South came that people wanted to emulate what they was doing and forgot about where we was from. Mm. And then a lot of the older uh, peers that we got, a lot of the older artists that had the power to sign niggas from New York and put them on, they did it. Like yeah. They would run and do a record uh, with T.I. when he was brand new. Mm. So they would jump on the juvenile record or some shit like that, but you let, you know, Uncle Murder or King Bo, mm. you understand, or Fred the Godson put a hot record out, they won't, the A-list nigga won't jump on their record and help push them to take them to the next level. You could have a motherfucker come out from down there that been out two weeks, just started rapping. Like, remember Trinidad J? Yeah, 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 yeah. He said he started rapping like about eight months ago. That's crazy. That fucking record he put out, that nigga had about... Eight A-list niggas on the remix. That's wild. Mad niggas up here jumping on it. But let King Bo put a record out that pop in the street. You think Jay-Z gonna jump on it? You think Nas gonna jump on the beat to help push them and uplift them? Niggas ain't gonna do that. New York is just weird right there. Why you I, think I they do that, though? Why you think they don't... I don't even think it's an intentional thing. It's just that right now, everybody's riding the wave mm. of where the game is at. Niggas mm. want to win, so they're going to go and fuck with the people who's being heard. I get that. You can't forget about home base, yo. You can't, you can't do it, man. You can't do it. So, like, what you all think? I'm saying is, like, it starts at the top down. Mm. If the DJs work for the radio station, they have to play the records that the radio station is telling them to play. The records that they playing is coming from the record label who signed the artist that's sending the records. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? But that don't stop the DJs from New York that don't have power to play what they want. That when they're in the club, they can try to show love and break New York artists or whatever so it becomes a demand so niggas on the radio can grab it put it out there. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to make another point right quick. Like, Macklemore. I'll tell you something about Macklemore. I never really cared for him particularly. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I thought he was just a uh, Get making a sense? Yeah. yeah. But, Macklemore, being a Caucasian, grabbed three of the biggest legends of hip-hop all time. Kumo D, Grandmaster Melly Mel, and Grandmaster Cash made a record with them and hit and brought them out at the fucking BMA Awards. That's before. crazy. Yeah. A white man. Yeah. Not from New York. Yeah. I ain't never seen none of these niggas take nigga who helped create this culture that we all eat more of. Yeah. You could be a total dumb nigga. I ain't get past ninth grade, man. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? And I got it popping. Now, a lot of us ain't get degrees. They took three brothers who helped us eat without having to get a master degree or diploma or anything and he put them on the record. Then Macklemore put them That's on, deep. on the record, did a video for and brought them to the VMA. Like, I ain't never even been in the audience of the VMAs. That's crazy. He didn't perform, but how many A list artists out here could have went and got Melly Mel? Melly Mel made the message. Yeah. 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 You understand? They made white lines. Grandmaster Cass, Cold Crush. You understand what I'm saying? Kumo D? 
I don't think the new generation really appreciates the culture in a sense because they just know all they know is rap, hip hop, and whatever they play on the radio. I don't think they have an idea of where shit actually started. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing, man. A nigga could tell you the first nigga to fucking make Philly blunts, but they don't know about the culture that they feed their family on. Yeah. Should have discussed it, man. Like, at the end of the day, man. And you know what? Don't get it fucked up about me. Like, I like to see brothers who's not out here committing no crimes and not hurting nobody, feeding their family, doing what they do. So, by all means, kids like that type of music that's out now. It's fun hop and everything that's going on, I'm not taking nothing away from that because yeah. it's something positive, but I just don't want you to ever feel that this here is bigger and better than this, because yeah. it's not, because yeah. this is the foundation of everything, you understand what I'm saying? If it wasn't for this, it wouldn't be no that, so one thing a person can never say is, it's not relevant anymore, how? Michael Jordan ain't relevant no more. He don't play basketball. Yeah. Like hip hop is the only stupid shit you hear that in. You understand what I'm saying? When a person's not active, they not relevant no more. That shit don't make no sense, my nigga. Mm -hmm. no? Hood to swallow on me, bullets to follow on me. There's so much coke that you can run the slalom. Like battle rap, like that's one of the things that's up and growing. It came from some shit where dudes wasn't even getting paid. Now these dudes is on stages. You hosted last year Total Slaughter mm -hmm. and came through, and you know what I mean? Like, what's your, do you think that battle rap could ever grow to ever be an industry where it could make this type of money? Like, I mean, they doing the original art form or the culture of rapping, so. It's not unbelievable, and I think they really do deserve to get paid, but it's just certain things in a certain time and era we in. Let's just face it, okay. okay.